Hi you guys. Right, um I think I'm set up. I think I'm set up, right. <laughs> right, so I took down all the camera equipment and all that lot, like, ready and waiting. Hi Christine. Hi, 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 hi. Um I took down all the camera equipment and I've had to put it back up and memorise where everything clips in because um the stand that I normally clip the camera to is on the, the cabinet that I'm doing up at the moment, so Hi Susan, yay, the post-it note worked. Right, so today's um, first part of the sew along of the Sew Together bag by Sew Demented. Um, I've only found the pattern as a download in one place and that is on Blueprint, which after this um, I will actually um, do a link at the end. Hi, hi, hi. And um, there is only a few paper patterns. So if you're in the in the UK, the paper patterns can be brought at So Hot UK, um, and I think Purple Stitches have it still in stock. They're the only two places that I've actually managed to find it as paper patterns, and I'll throw those um, links after the actual live show. Um, the other thing is it's very basic instructions so if you're new to um, bag making please watch back the videos because to be fair I made this bag back when it first came out in 2013 and back then I was all right with it but I've now hit I've come to sew it again for the first time in ages and it's basically um yeah, let's just put it this way. I've been reading the instructions and they're so basic. There's hardly any pictures. So if you can watch this video, you can only see my light. Can you not see my face? Can you see it now? Can you see my ugly mutt now? <laughs> um... Right, this is awkward. <laughs> awkward! <laughs> right, can you see me now? Yeah, right, thanks Wendy. Right, so, um, the, where well, was basically, there's hardly any um, imagery in the actual pattern, so, um, there's a lot of words, and some of the words I feel that are not needed, um, but, yeah so what i'm trying to say is you might need if you're a beginner you might need to have this video running in the background or another video because there is so many out there that have made this bag right so let me just get the pattern so the pattern is this and it won't be back to front um so it's by so demented um she's actually only got a few patterns out and to be fair this is her most used pattern so and to be fair it's a really nice pattern so we're going to be making this today it's got one exterior zip and it's got three zips and it's got one two three four compartments plus three zips inside zip pockets the zip pockets are not not deep so which is really good especially if you've got like wonder clips i've got a few of these so i've got like um my sewing utensils in it and stuff like that so the pattern calls for and i'm not going to read out cutting out measurements you have to actually go out and buy the pattern um the pattern calls for um practically two meters of fabric but when you actually physically cut it all out, you don't actually need two metres of fabric. Um, it calls for um, a fat quarter of fusible fleece and half a metre of um, interfacing. So interfacing, I've used two types of interfacing. For my exterior fabric, I've used G700 just to give it that bit of extra body because you're using fusible fleece as well. And then for the lining fabrics, I've used F200 
220 but I will navigate through that through the pattern you'll need um you'll need one 18 inch zip and you'll need three nine inch zips so the nine inch zips need to be number three zips so that's like dressmaking zips and then your outer zip needs to be either a number three zip or number five zip which is your 18 inch zip to be fair, I like a sturdy zip on the outside because it's obviously the one that you get in and out and close quite a lot. So I've gone for number five zip. Right, so the only... Right, so the outer, as you can see, Tula Pink Sew Machine is um, up at the moment. She's given you two measurements in the cutting out the two measurements is one complete um, one complete bit that goes all the way around or which is for non-directional fabric if you've got directional fabric she gives you a second cutting out um, measurement so the second cutting out measurement is if you've got directional fabric because if i was to cut this fabric as one long piece this sewing machine on this side will be upside down so you'll need, if you've got one directional fabric, you'll need to cut out two pieces for your exterior and then sew it together and sew it together so basically your um, directional of fabric is pointing up on both sides. I'm going to do that for this pattern as well, the demonstration, because there's going to be many of you that are going to be um, coming with problems with directional of fabric. So, now there is one pattern piece, you need to actually cut it on the fold and that will generate the, these flappy bits underneath, these bits here, the accordion bits. I have that fabric too, it's lovely. Yeah, in the picture, when I took the photograph, it turned out quite pink. Um, I think it's because of the new lighting and that, and it's a bit too bright, so I've had to tone things down. But it's actually purple. So you will need to cut it out on the fold, and you'll need four pieces of that. So, <clears throat> yeah. The seam allowance is quarter of an inch. And um, it does stay otherwise stated unless it's otherwise stated that the the seam allowance is bigger but nowhere in the pattern is the seam allowance bigger so it's all the way through quarter of an inch so for my exterior I've got two pieces of fabric because it isn't directional but I want the fabric to go one way so I've cut it in two pieces and I've also interfaced those with um, G700. I've also got my piece of fusible fleece, which I will fuse after I've sewn those two pieces together. Then I've got what she calls B1, 2 and 3 and 4 pieces, which are your pocket pieces. Um, that's how you align in fabric and I've interfaced that. I've used a dark interfacing so you can see that I'm using an interfacing and I've used a very light, well not a very light, a light interfacing compared to the G700 and this is F220 and you need four pieces of that so that's, you're going to name them B1, B2, B3 and B4. Then you'll need four pieces for your inside zip pocket linings um, you'll need six pieces sorry and she has just named those zip pocket linings you'll also need that pattern piece cut on the fold and you'll need four of those then two of those are actually interfaced and two aren't interfaced then you'll need which I've done a bit of prep for, um, your zip tabs. Now I find the zip tabs slightly too long if you do it her measurements. So next, the next session, session two, I will show you how I've 
folded mine in a bit more to actually make them a little bit shorter because I'll show you now that's what happens is it's quite wider on this side I like it a bit narrower um so as it's wider it means the zip tabs well the zip tab I've done on the one side the correct way and then on this side I've done the zips zip tab my way because I just didn't like how wide this had gone this bit here you can use it as a carry handle if you wanted to um so yeah so you've got two pieces of those which are those and then you got four pieces of binding yeah it is um very windy we've had the windows open because it is still sunny outside susan but um very windy it's blowing in something so there's four pieces of binding and the binding is on straight of grain so that's salvage to salvage and then it's basically a quilter's binding so you're only folding it once when you actually come to press it but we won't be really touching much on the binding today we will be doing the binding and the zip tabs on monday so i'm going to pop those to one side right so for your number three inside zips i've actually gone longer um because i found that it's easier to trim off the zips afterwards rather than having that stopper in the way because the stopper would be in the way if you don't actually um trim it off and my number five zip is one that i've got from um, i buy so many um i've got this from michelle so that's bags of difference and it's a rainbow zip so i'm gonna start off i got a new iron pink right i'm just putting my iron on ready right the first thing i'm going to do is get my two main outer panels and work out because i've used the allison glass panel where she's got the circles i'm going to work out whether i want the if i want this bit at the top where the zip is or if I want this bit at the top of the zip I'm going to use this part as the top of the zip so and that both pieces are like that so this part here and this part here I'm going to pin together and sew together using quarter of an inch seam allowance and I'll pop the zip um, the camera down now so Can you let me know where the pressing mat's from? Yeah, um, the pressing mat that I've got is from um, eBay. I will put the link um, back in the um, the group again for you. Right, I'm just making sure that's the right camera angle. I've seemed to have moved my camera around quite a bit and it's not in the right position so that's something that I'm going to have to figure out. That's better. Right, so I'm popping those right sides to right side and I'm sewing them together using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So on my machine I've got a size I've just left my size 14 needle on. I've got Aurofil thread on um, because I'm actually quilting at the moment but this bag doesn't actually need polyester thread um, because you're not actually um, on your strap or you've got no straps or anything and um, I've got my walking foot on. If you've got a walking foot you may find it be a lot easier to use. So I'm sewing these together using a stitch length three number three and a seam allowance of a, um, a quarter of an inch
I'm reversing my stitches at the start and at the end just for precaution even though we're going to put some fusible fleece on right so the next thing I'm going to do is take this to my iron and press this seam open so let's just put this back and I'm going to finger press it open first oh Right, so I'm just going to press that open. And press it from the other side as well. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is get the fusible fleece. So with your fusible fleece you've got a wrong side and a right side. So the wrong side is the glue side, the right side is where there is no, where the texture isn't hard. We're going to put the glue side onto the wrong side of those two panels and we're going to use some steam. But first of all you should never put your iron on top of the um, the fusible fleece because it's obviously plastic you're going to have to cover it up with a pressing cloth and you need steam for this It's my first time using my new iron, so I don't know how well it works or anything, but it's um, it's pink. <laughs> That's not the reason why I wanted a new iron, no, no, no. <laughs> my steam button wasn't working on my old iron. As you can see, I'm not rubbing, um, if you're new to pressing fusible fleece or interfacing, you should never glide the iron over. You should actually just lift it up and move it around. Um, so basically, so it's not actually distorting the fabric underneath or the, the fusible. If you were to actually rub the iron over the area, you will find that um, you might get creases and stuff. Now, some people have been messaging me saying, why have you actually, um, why don't you get creases, um, wrinkles when, when you use fusible fleece? If you notice, most of my patterns or patterns that I do, do, do use fusible fleece, everything's got interfacing on, on the actual fabric, so you don't actually get any wrinkles. All right, so to check to make sure it's fused, you just try and lift up down the sides. And I think that's all fused. Yep. Right. Let's turn that iron down. So the next thing you're going to do is pop this panel now to one side. And I'm in that room here. So we're having to move around for my studio because good news is that I'm having to move around because I'll be going on John's show soon. So yeah, for those who know John on Crafters TV, so yeah, I've been penciled in, but I'm actually doing it from home. So rather than travelling, because some people are travelling now, some people are not, and I'm one of those that I'm not. Um, right, so the next thing we're going to do is 
get one of the pieces that's got the interfacing on and that's the side panels and one that hasn't got um, any interfacing on. We're gonna oh. pop those right sides together. matching up the sides yeah, yeah I must admit um, Jennifer I've bought loads of those panels I've got loads of those um, Alison Glass um, art theory panels I think I've got about four left um, so yeah you're popping those right sides together matching up the sides and then we're just going to sew down the two short sides and the top leaving the bottom and we're going to sew using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and reverse your stitch at the start and at the end Um, Jennifer, we're making the Sew Together bag um, by Sew Demented. It's not one of my patterns. Um, I will be putting the link to it at the um, at the actual um, at the end. Oh, that's okay, Lo. Lo. Hope you're well, and I hope you're making a lot of jewellery. Right, so I've just sewn down the one side. And I'm sewing across the top area, making sure my needle's a quarter of an inch away, and sew down this bit. Reversing my stitch, and I'm just going to quickly do the other, other one. So, for those that I've missed, so it's right sides to right side, one is interfaced, one isn't interfaced. So put those, and we're using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Yeah, the Karen, um, with so much going on in the background, I'm not getting much sewing in at all, to be fair. <laughs> it's actually been refreshing to do this pattern rather than stressing over my own pattern for once. Um, even though I've, I've made this bag, I think I've um, made a couple of... A couple of tens anyway so at least 10 15 at least since it's the pattern's been out right so I've sewn down the sides then where the corners is you just need to trim those off so you're trimming them at an angle but not going into your seam allowance. So I'm hoping you can see that. I've just not gone into my sewn line, but I've just cut the excess off. You need to do that for both panels. I know Princess Ad Admin um, from this group has made quite a few of these um, recently. Right, so I'm just going to turn it right side face and go out. Now this bag um, that I'm making, once it's finished, I am going to um, basically um, do a giveaway and someone can have it. Because I find quite a lot of bags in the process. 
right so and then we'll just do the other one when I was tidying up and stuff and sorting out like the cabinet and that I found loads of bags so yeah this one's definitely going to be um, in a giveaway next week right so you take these to your iron and give them a bit of a press so you need to roll the seams yeah they are great for storing tools but I've just had loads of tool drawers made for me and stuff so I don't need anything else to store my tools in <laughs> right. Go make sure your seams are right out and you've rolled it. And same with this one as well. Okay, right, so that's number one done. Let's quickly do number two. So how is everybody coping? Are they managing to um have are you managing if you've got kids at home, are you managing to teach them plus work? Has many people gone back to work? I'm refusing to let my husband out. <laughs> no, he has to travel on public transport, um, on a train, and it's about an hour's journey to where he works in the city. And um they can work from home, so. But if he has to go in, I'll I'll be tying him to the chair because he's not risking us. <laughs> that sounds really bad, doesn't it? Really. <laughs> right. So next thing we're going to do is sew down the two sides and across the top, and we're sewing um, top stitching one eighth of an inch away. Right, so I'm using a stitch length three for this as well, number three. No, Jennifer, no, public transport. Me and my husband don't drive as it is. Um, I'm not the world's best driver. I'm a great sewing machine driver, but nah, nah, don't get me on the roads, I'm crazy. But um, yeah, I personally am not enjoying um, seeing people use public transport and how busy they are getting already because we're a commuting town about 40 to 40 minutes to an hour away from Birmingham City and we're already seeing that they're starting to get a bit busier and it's like do you really need to go on the train somewhere uh, obviously you need to go to work but yeah yeah unfortunately you can't stop working can we so Yeah, school in Susan. Um, instead of running, taking the go, <laughs> enjoying a bit. Yeah, so you're missing the school run then, Susan. <laughs> um, yeah, it's. I'm. We're juggling at the moment, so we're doing a few hours a day in the morning. Um, well, so few. We're doing at least four hours with the kids. Well, I'm doing four hours with the kids in the week. Um, school work. Um, and. Um, then my afternoons is work, so husband is working from home, children grown up away Scotland lockdown. Yeah, Scotland's still in quite a large lockdown at the moment, aren't they? Yeah. Right, so I've... Yeah, no, no, no. Mum and Dad um, live on in a really quiet um, neighbourhood and they live... Um, 
they have a buzz that goes on route past their house. My dad, one day, when the lockdown was still on, but the buzzes were still running because obviously the, you had to go into work, some people still had to. There was like one or two people on complete whole day and that buzz goes past every hour on the hour. And then dad says on Wednesday when, to, when I saw him over the hedge, um, he said he counted 30 in one day on that bus. And then today he's messaged me and he said, he he, he looked at it and he goes, it was ram-packed. So because some of the, some of the like smaller shops are opening up round by us, which is wrong, they shouldn't be. But don't get me started. <laughs> Right, so I've popped those to one side. We're gonna move on to the zip pockets. And this is the bit that's scary for everybody. So this is not scary, I'll tell you that for sure. Um, and I'm not saying this um, because I've made it a few times. If you lay it out, as she says on the instructions, you yeah, um, Polly, I'm with you on that one. I've seen the pictures. Um, even our local walks are getting really busy because we've got about 21 um, country walks around our town and it is getting ram-packed, all the walks are. So, yeah, no, no. Anyway, let's move away from that. Right, so in the um, pattern, she does a diagram of her telling you to lay out your fabric as she says so she says to lay your first one which is b1 and then she tells you to get two of these which is your pocket linings and lay that next then you get b2 and you lay that next to it and then you keep doing that until you get to b4 obviously i've got no space for that so we're going to pick up B1 lining, um, B1 outer pocket and B1 lining piece. So that's one of these first. And we're going to put B1 lining piece for the pocket and B2 to one side at the moment. All will be revealed. So many of you know that I like quilters tape. So quilters, um, wash away tape it's visible because when you're sewing in a zip your zip moves around and yes I am changing my zip foot to a zip foot I don't normally do this but I'm doing it for the sakes of the people that are beginners so many of you will know that I'm quite lazy and I use my quilter's foot um, my walking foot for everything but I'm actually doing my zip we're using a zip foot so what I've just done is on my zip foot if I take it off on my zip foot I've got a narrow zip foot um, you some some have like a hook which you have to move from side to side this one is you put the this on to your actual um, zip foot your needle can go in the center that's if you're doing an invisible zip and then you've got a left and right so if you have a seam allowance of uh, one point uh, eighth you tend to go to the right side but because we're using a quarter of an inch seam allowance on this bag you need to move it over to the left so we're moving the needle over to the left and on my machine, you do that by your zigzag button, um, which basically moves the needle. Or when you're doing a zigzag, it identifies whether your zigzag is going to be big or if you're going to have a narrow zip zigzag. Right, so I'm going to get one of my zips. Right, so the panel is um, got two measurements. The smallest size side of the measurement is the one that doesn't actually attach to the zip. You need the longer side that actually attaches to the zip. The only way you can do that is if you put your zip pocket on it, you'll know that you've got the right side. 
right so along this one edge here i'm just going to run quilters tape or wash away tape depending on what you want to use i'm going to run that right next to the edge So glad we're still in lockdown Scott. Yeah, to be fair, your numbers are still quite high though, aren't they, compared to the the UK. Um I mean the um England. Oh my god, I really cannot get my words out. Yeah, same with Wales. My husband's father lives in Wales and he's <coughs> he's still on lockdown. Um, right, so you need to know which way you want your zip to open, if you want it to open left to right or right to left. This is the point where you're going to navigate which way you want the zip. I like left to right. And because my zip's longer, I'm making sure my stop is coming off at the end and my zip is off at, an e off at the end. So when I'm sewing this on into place... It means that I don't have to lift up my zipper foot to move the zip out the way. So as you can see, my zip is hanging off quite a lot. Right, so I've stuck that. So it's right side to right side. So the right side of the zip, which is where the teeth are showing of the zip, is actually right side facing down on the right side of the outer B1. And then you're going to run some tape along the top just where the panel is underneath so that's from that edge to that edge and peel off that and then we're going to get the line in and you're going to get the right side and that needs flipping over and that's going right side to the wrong side of the zip and to the right side of your um, B1. So and we're going to pop that on top, sandwiching the zip in between. That's not perfect. Now you can actually find the center of the pocket and the center of the zip if you wanted to but you don't really need to because the measurements should be perfect now we're going to sew you'll feel the zip in the center of that zip and the coils in the center you're going to sew a quarter of an inch away from the edge so because i've moved my zip foot to the left um, my needle to the left side means that I'm a quarter of an inch away from the edge and I'm just going to reverse the stitch at the start and at the end Yeah, that's what, well, Susan, that's why I keep long nails. <laughs> John used to say that on sewing quarter quite a lot. Right, so we're going to press this lining up. Then we're going to lift the zip and press that lining underneath and give this a good press. So I'm just going to quickly do that without moving the camera. And you put a bit of steam on it so it goes into place. And then we're just going to... We're just going to... Oh, that's the secret. Yeah, it is. Long nails. Um, we're just going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away. I'm going to keep my zip foot on, but I'm going to move it, my needle over to the left-hand side to do that. is caught up 
There you go. I'm just moving that thread out of the way because I don't want don't want it to get caught. So now we've done that, we need to get our pocket B2 piece, which I've gone for an orange. And we're going to stick some tape in where the actual, on the actual um, zip. And we're going to tape it in between. So it matches up where that line in pieces B1 is. And I'm going to just peel off the back enough of that. So we're going to get B2. And we're going to marry up the, the long edge of B2 right side facing down. And we're going to make sure it's got the edges matching up and the lining you can't see the lining from underneath which is the um, B2 the B1 sorry and they should be perfectly matching up each side on both sides so and then we're gonna flip this over then we're gonna run some quarters tape along the top here So, peel off the back end. Then we're going to get the lining of the pocket right side facing down. So the right side of that lining should meet this right side of the lining. And we're going to stick those into place. Then we're going to go to the, turn it over and basically sew this into place. So move my needle back over to the left hand side and sew in a quarter of an inch away. And I'm reversing my stitch and starting at the end. I'm just going to press that open. I'm going to finger press this time and finger press this one open. I'm just going to top stitch again, but this time I'll leave my needle on the left hand side again. And I'm top stitching one eighth of an inch away. Right, so you're going to have to repeat this process once again, but this time, rather than doing a complete unit, complete new unit, we are going to now put the zip on this, on B2, the next zip goes on the other end. So, you choose your zip. <clears throat> And you get your washers, washi tape or whatever you want to tape and stick that on the end. Basically we're making one long line of fabric zip, fabric zip, fabric zip and then fabric to finish off with. So we're going to pop this right side to right side just like we did last time matching up the edges 
So that's right side of the zip to the right side of B2. So we're now on B2. Yeah, Susan, um, have you never had a thread cutter before, Susan, on your sewing machine? Because I'll tell you something, I love my thread cutter. They say with a thread cutter, um, it saves you thread when you've actually... Because obviously people with out thread cutters pull their thread out a bit and then start um, snipping it off. And basically you're left with like half a foot every time you finish sewing. So it basically um, means that by the time you've come to finish that roll of thread, you've used at least three metres of cutting off the excess thread and it's quite a waste. So I've put the tape on the, on the, on the back of the zip and we're going to get the next pocket line in and we're going to pop that right side down lining it up and we're going to quickly run hi Elaine right and then we're just going to sew a quarter of an inch stick that into place better so who's ready for the panel launch on Sunday tell you something I've been itching to show you sort of like that park lane bag and the panel for ages and I thought sorry I'm just going to show you even before the launch um thanks to Amy who I think tuned in but I don't know if she's still watching has done a fantastic job of the panel that's Amy right so Amy and Rebecca Reed have a business called Amber Makes and they do panel kits and they run Hushkanda or Hushkanda or what I cannot say it and I do apologize <laughs> um they were on that on yesterday and they did really amazing and that cottage wow that cottage must have taken them for ages we've seen the attic windows before but the um the cottages wow I was a bit blown away by those and the cats the little cat panels as well so I'm just popping this right side facing out, both lining, and just giving it a good finger press. You should really press it with an iron, but for speed, I'm just going to do it. I had a machine ages ago that had one, but went wrong. Yeah, um, has anybody ever had problems with their needle, um, the needle threader, threader on the actual, um, on their actual sewing machine? Because... I've got loads wrong with this one. It won't thread the needle at all. Um, I think my hook is broke. Um, I've never had it before. That's the only problem I've ever had with this machine. Plus, the screw went a bit weird at one point, but they soon replaced that straight away for me. So, bless them. So, yeah, um, Amy from amber makes or amber designs or whatever they are um actually produces the bag patterns for uh, bag panels for me um and the repeating patterns but the bumblebee work is my own work and yeah i'm so excited to bring all those out tomorrow um i keep thinking today is saturday but no it's um friday right so New quilters tape. Yes, no chance of thread. Yeah, it's so frustrating. Yeah, it is. Mine's broken. Have to do it by eye. Yeah, me too, Lynn. Yeah, my thread was fine once. Put it in line. Went wrong until a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it it's common. It's a common thing then. Yeah, mine does not work either. Yeah, it must be a common thing. It must be the fact that the spring breaks or something. It's really annoying. Completely annoying. Right, so I'm just sticking another piece of tape on the zip. Now I've top stitched. But I think with bag making, because we use a larger needle, they have a big eye anyway. So I personally don't struggle. But if I'm using like sort of... A, like a really fine needle because um for dressmaking and stuff that's when i really do struggle 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're right, Jennifer. <laughs> yeah, it's so right. I had mine replaced. Carol, did you have it replaced at like a service centre or did they, um, the actual manufacturers replace it for you? So I'm going to get the lining of the um, zip pocket, pop that right side facing down on top of the zip. And once again, just sew that into place. Yeah, um, I've had to do mine myself, um, Lynn, but I'm not 100% that I've, when I've gone inside, just to give the screws a bit of a tight, because that's what service people do. I think I haven't tightened the one up enough, so I think mine's due for a service. You'd be surprised how many people don't get their machine serviced. I get my mach machine serviced um, once or twice a year and I'm lucky that I don't have to actually take it into a service centre because my dad actually services for me. But I will eventually, when he's no longer around. I will have to do it myself. So I'm just going to... Oh no, I've done that wrong. Oh no. Right, just ignore that bit. Please. I've put my line in on the wrong way. We all do it. Right, I'm just going to unpick that. I should have put B3. So please concentrate. Yeah, well, I'm no longer an ambassador for um, Elna, so I don't get mine serviced anymore. So, I'm going to just get him to teach you how. Yeah, he, he was meant to be teaching me this time around, but... Um, Obviously, can't at the moment. Got to keep him protected. But yeah, he is planning to teach me. Then you're all right. It's going to save me a lot of money because it's not cheap, especially when something goes wrong. I can do up to a certain part. I definitely on my industrial. Yeah, Susan, you're not the only one. Um. <laughs> um yeah, on my industrial machine, I can actually service that because every so often your um, every so often you do have to do the stitch alignment, and stitch alignment is quite a daunting job for someone that has never done it before because the way it locks the thread underneath, like this, how it locks the thread is a bit different to an industrial sewing machine. Let's just get rid of all this. Alright, so I'm going to start again. So we're going to grab B2, a B3. Now I'll tell you something. For this thread that I'm pulling out here, I've run out. I've just ordered a new one on Amazon. So you know like those one pound um, clothes horse um, roller things that's got like the paper on. It's great for getting the unpicking thread from your fabric. So you just roll it across normally. Right, so I'm going to get B3. And we're going to stick that down. And peel that off. And stick that down into place. Flip that over. You would stick quilters tape on the back here, but it's still attached to this lining piece here, so I'm just going to stick that into place. 
so we haven't really lost anything just sewn it wrong stick that into place flip that over and then we're just gonna sew a quarter of an inch away press this open <laughs> Lisa didn't do, two, do the top stitching which means that I would have um, had two rows of stitching to unpick and then my, I'm just finger pressing it let's get rid of some of that pieces of thread I'm just going to top stitch down one eighth of an inch away I love the colour fabric she's. Yeah, well, I've matched the colours to the outer panel, um, the colour theory of the Alison glass panel that I'm using. And as someone's going to be winning this, I wanted it to be me rather than plain, um, rather than mild fabric. So this is very me, this is. So. Right, the last one is this one so we're gonna put the zip on so we're making the last where did you get the plain fabric from right hmm. jennifer good question right so the blue the teal that i've just seen which is b3 is from um where that's from so hot so this is um one of the basic planes that they sell the orange and the pink are left over from um sewing quarter demonstrations and the panel my outer panel is from alison glass so that's i buy i buy where i can grab it because those panels always sell out so they could be from anywhere but I know so hot I've got them in at the moment. But the plain fabrics, a bit of a mix and match. I tell you, the plain fabrics that I'm really into at the moment are the Moda Grunge ones, um, which are that lining pocket. I just like the fact that it's like three or four tones of fat, um, colours. I went to in a price machine and the quality is so much better. Yeah, um, Susie, you're right. Spending that little bit extra of money um, on your machine, so much more features on it and sounds quite a, some of them use like um, new motors, um, which are like brand new out and which are a lot quieter. Right, so I've just peeled off the backing tape of that, grabbing another piece of pocket lining. And I'm sticking that down. And this is right, I'm not going to have to unpick this bit. Sew this into place. Yeah, Susan, um, one of my favourite fabric lines at the moment, and I never thought I would like it, to be fair. I'm really into the grunge mode of ones at the moment. I also like um, uh, like the... Is it... Ha no, it's not handover. It's... Um, I've just bought some from Le Louisa Gold Gold's um, shop, um, Sew Motion, um, it's like a textured finish, so it's like a linen texture. 
I just love those. I love using them. So I'm just going to top stitch along. Just move my needle over so I don't have to change my foot. And we're going to sew the last piece on, which is your B4, goes on first, getting it right this time. <laughs> and we're going to stick some tape on. And you're thinking, how does this make the pockets? Well, we're going to show you how the pockets actually generate for inside in the next few steps. So and peel off the back end of the tape and pop that on right so once I've made the pockets I'm gonna leave it for today and then on Monday I'll be back don't have to join me because I know it's bank holiday and I know a lot of you people will be in the garden doing barbecues and stuff like that if it's warm but um be back on Monday at two o'clock and um, finishing off the bag as much as I can. I won't be doing all the binding because I'll tell you, I basically sew my binding on using the actual machine and then I hand finish it because I'm not a confident binder like sewing on top of the binding. So my husband's just um, connected on. Getting a bit bored of the kids, are you, Michael? Right, so I'm going to get the pocket line in, pop that right side facing down, and that's the last piece going on. Thanks, Susan. It does help with you being here, because sometimes I miss all the comments and... Oh, needle's in the wrong position. This is the most daunting bit, this part is. It's sewing all the zip pockets together and making sure they all work. Michael Frost, you need to stop that. Right, so, um, so does anybody know the baked potato song? <laughs> About washing your hands and stuff like that. Well, we've been singing it all day and he's now, um, he's now just put baked potato. Um, and it's like really frustrating. Oh, he's a child. He's an inner child. John loves him. John can have him. <laughs> right. Uh, just pop this down. You can have mine with cheese. <laughs> Yeah, baked potato. <laughs> yeah, Michael, get cooking. <laughs> Where did you find the potato emojis from? Oh my God, this is what I live with. Children. I've got not just two children living here, I've got three children. Actually, no, I'm a child really too. Right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is, before we go any further, is open, open up, which John are you talking about, babe? John Scott, John Scott. He found he he loves Michael, that he keeps calling him the Ginger Ninja and stuff like that. And he always asks, he never asks about me. He always asks about how's his Ginger Ninja. That was early. Yeah, right, Michael. Right, prawn. Yeah, Lynn. I'm a prawn girl myself. I'm ch prawn and Jack Potato. Right, so I've opened up my lining on the back. It's nice. You can have a laugh. Yeah, we are children in this house. I'm going to pull my zip pull into the centre and I'm just going to stitch over the stitch over the end here and I'm going to stitch over the end here because we're going to trim off the zips. Oh, 
Oh, Susie, um, I try to. I'm going to change my zip, my foot over. I try to, but sometimes she found the emojis. this back into the centre. I'm popping my needle back into the centre so it doesn't confuse me. Oh, I was lucky when my, my needle nearly came on thread then. You make it look so easy. Will this be on your... Yes, it will. Um, I'm going to wait until after Monday. So Monday will be the... Fingers crossed will be the last session. After Monday, it will. they will both be on YouTube as one long video. So I'm just reversing my stitch over there. Okay, <laughs> said i Oh, kids, just calm down. Yes, I nearly finished. <laughs> right, so the turnip story. I'm gonna have to let you into that. So many of you know that I like my Nintendo Switch, um, which is a games console, and I like Animal Crossing. And if you buy turnips in Animal Crossing, and that's real turnips, well not real turnips, virtual turnips, and sell them, you can sell them for big money. I don't know why, but turnips is like gold dust. Anyway, so I haven't sold my last of my turnips this week, Curtis, but I need to. And you only get seven days to sell them, so yeah. That's what the turnip conversation is about now, not potato not baked potatoes I hate yep right so I'm just going to quickly sew this bit here so I'm just going over the zips you used to have your own farm why what did you do what what um what what was on your farm is it like flower yeah flower it's very yeah gold dust yeah um so um what did you have on your farm then was it animals or was it crops we're actually crops and cows around here because um Shifnall's got quite a few towns a uh, few farms around it well actually quite a large amount of farms but we're known for um sugar beet around by us so I'm just going over the ends of the zip so the basically the um the the pull won't fall off on each zip. Right, so I'm just going to just trim those. I'm not using my best scissors, I'm using paper scissors. how many of you leave your thread attached like so if you've got a tail of thread and you leave it attached be surprised why people get jammed up machines because nine times out of ten it's the thread that is left our um our local co-op actually had um all its um shelving filled with um flour on Wednesday when I popped in to quickly grab a few things. Ah, oh, blueberries. Blueberry muffins. Yes, please. I don't do close. Right, and I'm just... Susan, I'm with you on that one. After the wedding, I've never sewn an item of clothes again. However... I've got the Frenchman's bomber jacket pattern still to do. Do you wear your mask? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, I did have a bit of a laugh at the post office on Wednesday. I took my I took my flowery one, and Wendy, the manager, 
at the post office just laughed her socks off <laughs> but I said I'm getting protected here so, well I feel like I'm getting protected not 100% protected but yeah right so the next thing we need to do is I'm just gonna quickly get to that measurement right so you got B1 which is my first pink one my orange is B2 so we're going to draw a line on B2 and we are working at, say I'm going to draw a line, I think I haven't got my marker pen. Right, so from the zip here, we're going to measure in three, and, three inches and a quarter, just get my pen. Right, so we're going to measure from this coil of the zip, we're going to measure into B2. Let's just close that. All right, so we're going to measure into B2, three inches and a quarter. So that is one, two, three and a quarter. And we're just going to run a line. I've got a disappearing pen with heat. Then we're going to move on to B3, which is my blue one, and repeat that same process. So you're measuring from the coil of the zip. And we're measuring into B3 and drawing the line. And then we would do the same on B4. So the only one you're not drawing the line on is B1. Okay. These lines that we're drawing on will disappear. Well, if you're using a, an invisible ink or whatever. Um, I'm using the one way it disappears with the heat. If you're using light colours, if you're using blacks, then vice not to. But these are your nice sewn lines we're going to generate the actual pocket so if I just bring up the camera right so you're going to put your hand I'm hoping you can see this right so we're going to put our hand in where those two lining pieces are and make sure it's all flat bring the lining pieces together and basically we're marrying up B1 and B2 and the two lining pieces we're not touching any of these here at the moment then you're going to take it to your machine and just sew along that's that line that you've just drawn I'm not going to bring the camera down I'm just going to show you once I've sewn it so this is making the first pocket. Right, so I've sewn across that. So that will be my first pocket in the back. So we're now going to drop that piece, move to the next zip. Make sure our two lining pieces are flat, so they're flat against the two pieces. Get the zip, hold it into place, make sure the zip's at the top. Marry up the two lining pieces, as you can see. And we're now going to sew just on that line there. You should have your first pocket flopping down. Could you put a clip at all? Yeah, you can. You can. I'm just doing it for quickness, Carol. So, I'm going to pop that underneath my machine. So 
So now you should have two pockets generated and a bit of lining from B1 still left. Now we're going over to the last zip and doing the same as what we did before. So I've married up the two lining pieces and we're just going to sew across that line there. Yeah, this is where everybody gets confused, is the pockets. The pockets are the worst parts of the actual pattern. That's what everybody says anyway. So now we have one pocket, two pockets and three pockets. And then we've got two pieces of lining at the end, these two pieces here. So the next thing we need to do is just basically trim this excess off. So you're trimming it about one eighth of an inch away from where the two, piece, two pieces actually um, are sewn together. So I'm just going to trim that off one eighth to a quarter of an inch. You just want to get rid of this at least there's an inch worth of fabric here that you're cutting off. So, at least an inch. That's all right, that one. And this one here. You need to do the pockets as the three and a half inch measurement because if they're any wider so if you go past the three and the quarter so three and a quarter if you go past the three and a quarter inch you will find that it will basically um the pockets won't mm, sit correctly within the bag so that's the main bit done so on monday we will attach, the next part we will do is attach these, which are the two sides. So it's a matter to measure down from the coils. Yeah, so from the inner coil, so from the inner coil, you're measuring up into B2, Mary, at three and a quarter inches. Then you move over to the next zip and then you're basically measuring three and a quarter inches from the coil of the zip into B3. And then you do exactly the same for B4. The only one that you're not actually doing any um, drawing lines on is B1. Because that will automatically come when you sew that one down, the, um, down B2 anyway. So on Monday, we're going to see how far we can get, because well, I don't know if this is going to be a one or uh, a two or three part series, but we're going to attach the two side bits, attach the zip, three zip pockets to the outer that we sewed earlier, that we put together earlier, and then I'm going to start attaching the binding. I think it might actually run over to doing a quick session in the week as well, but yeah, so that's today's session over with any questions please don't hesitate if you're too scared to ask because i know some people have been scared to ask um within the group or within this chat you can actually just private message me i'm happily i'll happily help you and many people will know that if i can't i don't answer you there and then don't be offended i'm working but i will answer you near enough um in the evening anyway so Right, so on Sunday is the launch of the new pattern, the new panels and the new magnets. So I'm just going to show you a bit. So the new pattern is a revamp of an old bag and it's called the Park Lane Bag. So it's got two finishes. So you can either have a plain finish or you can have this quilted effect finish. Um, yeah, so, and I basically have a video, a so long video for this as well. So don't be alarmed. It's not hard. It's actually one of the most easiest bags you can probably make. Um, and the lining inside's completely struck in, 
completely made different compared to the old higher class bag. The pattern is now called the Park Lane bag. The Park Lane bag is named after my street. Um, so we live in Park Lane. <laughs> so that's a bit of an obvious. I know we actually live in Park Street, but Park Lane's just a bit off from here. Um, you'd be able to get it as paper pattern or a digital download. Alongside this will be two kits as well. Um, so Amy, bless Amy, she did it really spare the moment. She made a panel which is rainbow colours, um, exactly near enough like this. You're very welcome people. I honestly don't mind doing these lives. So just, yeah, sometimes I can't do them because of work commitments, but yeah. But um, yeah, the panel comes with either kit one which is there is no pattern with it because the pattern is you brought it as a download and then there's kit two which has got the paper pattern version and then you've got the b panel that's coming out the two b panels one's a really large one which you can make cushions from and do whatever you want with it and then there's a smaller panel then then there's the two owl panels that are coming out, which are two new new panels. And then there's loads of repeats from the past panels as well, which people have been asking for the, the sew ones. So the um, Just So Happy range. And also on Sunday, you'll see the launch of, and I'm hoping you can see these, the magnets as well. So they're coming out as well. These shouldn't have been magnets, right? So I'll tell you the story. So I'm working alongside the manufacturers at the moment and I was describing a needle minder to them. The needle minders are, I said, have to have a certain magnet in it and it can't, it has to be an EE magnet, which is basically it comes out the top, the magnetized comes out the top so the needle can sit on top. They didn't use EE magnets on these. So they're going to carry on doing the fridge magnets for me, but they're going to work on getting the correct magnets in for the needle minders. So they are working on it. So the needle minders are coming. So yeah, these are just over, uh, just under an inch and a half wide, these are. So yeah, Sunday's gonna be a busy day. So launch is at two o'clock UK time. Is that Eastern? Is that Western? I don't know. Yeah, UK time. <laughs> I'm not good at geography. Um, so yeah, it will be launched. Um, please read the descriptions. Make sure you're ordering the correct ones because now my quantities go straight to the manufacturers. Um, I don't actually send the quantities over. So please read the description of all the listings to make sure you're ordering the correct ones for me. Even though I do all the packing and the cutting out once they arrive, I'm just a process of eliminations. They are going to um, take that bit off or um, help me out a bit by getting the quantities direct from my, my page, if you understand where I'm coming from. So please read the instructions. There is no way I can change it this time around. There might be. If it does happen, message me. We'll try and sort something out. Don't worry about it. So yeah, so two o'clock Sunday, be in the group, everything will go live and there'll be pictures. Yeah, so yeah. So on Monday, I will be going live again, finishing off the, hopefully trying to finish off the sew bag, um, sew together bag. So yeah, that's a lot of everything. <laughs> right, so if you've enjoyed it, just let me know. If you're not enjoying what I'm teaching you, please let me know because then it means I can figure out what else to teach you. Or is there anything else that you want me to teach other than bag making? Refusing to do clothes making, putting that out there. Refusing to do clothes making. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you have a nice weekend and I'll see you on Monday. Bye.